Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. I'm Dan Lamihu, County Board Chairman, co-host of our monthly show with Adam Peen, our Administrative Coordinator. And on a monthly basis, we try to bring the services that Sheboygan County provides to its residents to our viewers. And this week, or this month, we're talking about Information Systems Department, and we have with us Joyce Schneider, the uh, head of that department. And with 23 departments and, and 12, 1,300 employees and the types of services that we provide, information is, is key to the services we provide. And as we all know, with our own personal computers, um, technology changes on a, on a daily basis, practically. And Joyce's department is in charge of keeping Sheboygan County up to date and have our information flowing on a regular basis. So that's what we're going to talk about today, about information systems and what it means to Sheboygan County. But first, Joyce, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and, and your background with Sheboygan County. I've been with uh, Sheboygan County now for 27 years. I started in 1974. I have a background, a major in data processing and a minor in accounting, and was promoted in 1983 to director of the department and have been in that position ever since. And then tell us a little bit about the department itself and uh, the primary responsibilities of the department and the mission of the department. Uh, we have 15 staff members, including myself. Uh, our mission is to support, guide, and assist in the information technology advancement in Sheboygan County. We maintain um, and configure and install software and hardware for all of our agencies. Uh, we provide the security network for those agencies. And we also do additional training for the users and IRIS staff as well. And then we have 23 departments. Uh, just a little background on how many of these departments and, and people in these departments rely on, on your services. Uh, we have 23 departments that we provide service for within the county and average about 600 and some employees that we have PCs on desktops that we provide service for. Uh, we do training. Uh, last year we did some training for employees and we had 581 people that went through the training for the county. So probably half, half of the employees of Sheboygan County have a some way that they work access, in... Access to or, or regular use of a computer. Right. Some way in their workplace they do have access or a need to get at a personal computer and pull information for it for public service. And with, with that number of computers and people using computers, what are some of the challenges you face and your staff face? Well, we do have... Uh, when I started, we were only servicing two departments, and so now we have 23 departments. We also have 13 remote buildings, so we do no longer just service within our courthouse. We have a number of remote buildings that we do provide online services for as well. So we're busy training, we're busy installing. Uh, we have people that go out, they have a pager, they have a cell phone so that we can uh, make the best of their time as they're in these remote locations. What you say that, that they have personal computers, what, what type of equipment, maybe, maybe our viewers aren't really uh, familiar with the type of equipment we're talking about. What, uh, you know, some of us have, I know we, we've laughed about this before, but I've got, I've got, I've got a Macintosh at home, and, and that's, that's, a, that's a naughty word when it comes to, uh, to the computers of the county. But uh, what type of equipment are we talking about? Uh, we've switched. Uh, it's been a change as far as when I started. Currently, we have a client, what's called a client-server environment, where we have a number of servers that uh, contain the data, and we can maintain the backups on it. And on the user's desktops, we have PCs that are either running NT, Windows 95 or 98, and Windows 2000. And they're able to access those client servers um, off of that network. So the network in itself has grown. We have an infrastructure within those 13 remote buildings, and that gives them the ability to do word processing, Excel, applications within their own environment. When um, you talked about, originally when you were in the department, you, you serviced two two other departments. Now you're servicing 23. 
Uh, obviously, your staff has grown. What, 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 were you the only person when you were only servicing two departments, or what, what, what type of requirements do you need in your, from your staff people? No. Uh, the requirements have changed. When I started, yes, I was the only person besides the manager at the time, and I did just about everything. I did programming. I did the operations. Um, we did systems work. Now we've become more specialized in the communication area. We're working with uh, routers and hubs, um, new databases that are out there like SQL and Sybase. So the technology and the expertise of the staff has had to change as well. They've had additional training in that area. A lot of them have come from a mainframe environment, have a data processing degree background, and have made that switch to the new environment. We've also needed to train users um, on the onlines because there's more capabilities with the PCs now, more functions that they can utilize PCs for in their workplace, along with the new applications that they have developed in their areas. For example, in my business, if I have a problem with my Macintosh, I have to call the company I bought it from or, or something like that to help me through a problem. If, if somebody in the county clerk's office has a problem with their computer, they don't call the company we bought the computer from. They call your department. That's correct. So, That's so your, correct. your staff has the ability to fix, repair, have a software problems. They can answer software problems. So, so the answers are all, for the most part, are in your department. That's correct. We have um, three people that specialize in installing and configuring the PCs on the uh, desktops. We've also installed a help desk in our area so that if the end users have a problem, they have a number to call and there's usually a person there that mans it from 8 till 5 that can answer majority of the calls. If they can't, we um, put it on a tracking system and forward it to a person or an analyst who can and then get back to them at that point in time. I mentioned earlier that technology is changing almost daily and, and I know when you buy a computer, uh, by the time you get it home, the, the, the newest model is already on the shelves with, with upgrades already. And with the 600 plus computers or PCs that we have in the county, there's, there's most likely continual requests for equipment or software, things like that. How do you determine who gets what and, and, and uh, how, how does the, that process work? Well, that's a tough question, but... What we try to do is uh, provide a service or some equipment to each of the departments each year. We look at the new applications that are coming in or how those applications are going to be changed for the coming year. Based on that, we ask the departments uh, to create a list of the equipment needs that they foresee for the future, work with their liaison committees for approval, and then prioritize those lists and send them to us so that we have equipment indicated which are the most important needs if they're additional equipment to the network or if they're replacement of equipment. Once we get it, I assemble it and apply some values to it so that we can come up with an estimated budget figure, take a look at it. If it's something that's a critical need for the department, if it's a replacement, it's possible that I can take those pieces of equipment and put them into another department that has a need for equipment, but maybe it's not a high usage. So we do try to stretch the equipment that we have in the county and make the budget dollars last. Uh, the other thing that we took advantage back in 1999, we went to what was called a Citrix farm. And that allows us to utilize the servers as more of a processing power than the end user desktops. So the end user desktops can be what's called a thin client. So we have stretched a number of our PCs out to eight years and still been able to utilize them with even the new applications coming in. But it's not an easy task. Everybody is looking for new equipment and there's only so many budget dollars to go around. I, I know we didn't talk about this before we, we started this show, but uh, and you probably don't have the numbers with you, but how much approximately do you spend on an annual basis for new equipment and training and, and that type of thing? Capital outlay, I believe, is usually about 125000 each year. That's, and that's for equipment. That's for equipment. That's for PCs and printers. Uh, we also have specific projects out there that might be new applications of software. And again, those can run from twenty five to maybe 550000 depending on what the project is. 
Uh, as far as training, we usually try to put in about 30, 35,000 each year for training. And that's not just our staff training, that's also countywide training as well. And back in um, 2000, we did train about 581 people and we had 45 classes. That was conducted locally and they were not all county staff. We also included the city and the municipalities as well. Another cost that surprised me when I, when I became familiar with it was the cost of software. I know when I buy, for, again, relating to my own business, when I buy a word processing software or, or a graphic software, I pay for the software and, and for the right to use it, but I'm just, I am just I have one machine and I'm using it. But when we buy software for the county, we have a multitude of people using it. How does that work with the licensing for the... It seems to me that there's some, some pretty large numbers there for licensing, too. Yeah. Uh, software costs have definitely gone up over the years. Hardware costs have gone down. They probably balance themselves all over each other through the years. Um, vendors allow you that access capabilities, but they will only license it per five users, per 100 users, whatever they have on a network. And with the networks out there, for them in order to be able to enhance software and continue their maintenance because technology is changing so fast, the licensing costs have gone up. But they usually will group them within groups of 5, 50 to 100. And we only license based on the application for what we need for the users in that department. So some applications out there might have five user licenses, others might have 100. It depends on and what we, is out there. And we would there. pay for every one of those. Right. It's based on the sliding scale that the vendor okay. has established. Over the last two, three, four years, what are some of the, the major changes that have, have happened in, uh, in regards to information technology with Sheboygan County? Well, like I said, when I started, we were a centralized mainframe environment. Um, you did all the processing within that department, and it was really hard to communicate with other pieces of equipment outside of it if it wasn't attached. Uh, today, with the new changes in the operating system, the infrastructures, the internet, that has opened up the communications and the online capabilities so that we can remotely talk to different agencies. They don't have to be within the same building, don't have to even be within the same state. Um, the security issues have changed, though. Because of that, you are more concerned about the security in the network as well also. So the complexity of the communication equipment has grown as well over the years. We keep on mentioning 23 departments that you service and, and, and the ability to talk to different machines or, or different people. Uh, maybe you could just uh, tell us a little bit about two of the departments, the Sheriff's Department and Health and Human Services, as to the types of programs that they tie into with our computer system to do their work. Uh, Sheriff's Department has been on the system for a number of years. We have mobiles in the squad cars. We have dispatch uh, software on for them. We have a records keeping software on for them as well. There's uh, Detention Center has been a new um, building that was added on within the last few years and we do fingerprinting and mugshot applications in those areas as well. Basic to all of the county agencies, we have word processing, we have Excel, we have uh, access for a database, and those are all accessible to all the users as well. They have countywide email within their agency, and they also have internet access for them as well. Okay. There's Sheriff's Department has an accident <laughs> reporting software too that they can take out on the laptop and at an accident scene and do some record. But um, both of these departments of have to deal with state agencies on, on a daily basis. Right. And, and, and we have to be able to have our equipment talk to and use the software that, that they have provided also. Right. A number of years ago, we brought the Job Center on as a new building. And that is totally connected to the county and to the state. So the workers within that department have to access the state. And we have gateways, which are routers and hubs that make that communication possible. But they can get at both systems from one PC. They can get at the state system and they can toggle and get at the county system as well. Uh, human services, there's some new applications coming on that we're working with the state and they will also be accessing information off of the internet this time in order to pull state information. 
You know, it's really nice to have Joyce with us today. We've, we've had a number of our departments to date and people are very familiar with the Sheriff's Department and Health and Human Services and, and um, many of the departments to provide service to our constituents. And one of the unsung heroes clearly is our Information Systems Department. What people don't recognize and even within our own organization, if it isn't for the support of the Information Systems Department, very few of our departments would operate. All of the, uh, the computer support mm -hmm. and systems that are in place, wh whether it's billing or cutting paychecks, all of those areas uh, your department has a hand in. And, and uh, Joyce, as I'm sure our viewers have picked up, has a nice demeanor and, and has a, a way of handling all that and juggling all those responsibilities. But I know for a fact that people are always putting demands on her for yeah. assistance. They always want to have her assistance or her staff assistant first upgrade with information and, and she certainly is a key to our success. One of the things I know that your department and the county as a whole is real uh, proud of is our new website. Why don't you tell us about that a little bit? Yeah, we were, we've been planning on putting this up all oh, probably about the last year and a half and uh, finally found the time to bring it up this year in May and what we're looking to do is um, get information out to the public, make it more accessible to them. We started out by asking departments to pull information that was pertinent to their information, things that they would like to um, contribute and put out there for the public so that it makes their departments a little bit more accessible. We have been expanding on that. Uh, we've put some new areas out there, uh, sheriff com complaint forms so that uh, the public can interact with it and form um, a document out there that they can submit directly to the sheriff's department that can be acted on. We also have a new form in the land and water conservation for the tree and shrub program that we've placed out there that again they can fill in the form, uh, enter the information and then print it out at that point in time and bring it into the department for ordering that project's um, trees and shrubs. So we are going to be expanding on that. I think it's a way that uh, it's another media that we have out there in order to get information out to the public. We've put our agendas out there for our county board meetings and our liaison committee meetings. We've put the committee minutes out there as well and we've also added to it in the last few months the resolutions and the ordinance out there so that the public can access that information and be aware of what the topics are at the time of the meetings. So anyone who has a computer or wants to go to a library can access our website right. and get our minutes, our uh, meeting agendas, can provide input or comment, don't we have something? Yeah, there's a public forum out there that we have too that once you're a registered user on there, you can ask questions and get answers back based on that particular question that was addressed. Excellent. And our address is co.sheboygan.wi.us. And again, that's www.co.sheboygan.wi.us. So I hope folks will take a look at it. Mm -hmm. I know every department has a summary of responsibilities right. and uh, their mission statement. And if you want to make an anonymous sheriff's department complaint or you want to order some trees at the Land and Water mm -hmm. Conservation Department, uh, we're really looking for people's input on how we can continue to improve it. Another area you've been busy working on is the upgrading the tax software in the Treasurer's Department. How is that going to benefit taxpayers as well as the efficiency of that office? Uh, some of the changes, we're real excited about it because that is uh, probably one of the last systems that we have on the old mainframe. So we are converting that to a client server environment. Uh, one of the changes that we're really looking forward to is that fact that the tax bills themselves are going to be a laser form, which should make that document much more readable for the public. Also, we're going to be including barcoding on it, uh, which should help the treasurer's office as well as expediting the receiving portion of it. Uh, we want to include that on the receipts, on the payments, so we are going to include barcoding on more of the documents as they come in. The new system is really uh, also helping out in the planner's office and the real property. Plus, it's going to give us the ability to keep more years of history out there so that it, that will be accessible to the public as well on terminals within those agencies. So starting this year, as people starting receive their year, tax bills, they're mm -hmm. going to see a little different format. Right. And it should be a, um, more legible more for legible. them at that okay. point. 
Very good. You talked earlier about the Sheriff's Department and some of the roles and responsibilities you have there. I know uh, many of our viewer, viewers have probably heard about the improvement we're making in our uh, safety communication system or the 800 megahertz system. What's the status of that project and what are you working on right now? Well, there's really two parts to that project. Uh, the 800 megahertz is the first major one was uh, the radio project and that's countywide. And in fact, I was at a, the update of a meeting last night and the highway department was the initial department to test it out. Uh, that has been tested, it's, it's running, They've, um, Sheriff's Department is utilizing it, and it's been rolled out to some of the emblem services and the volunteer fire departments, and my understanding is today, Sheboygan Falls Police Department was gonna be testing their equipment out as well. So it's not in full production, but it is being rolled out to the other agencies and being tested. The second piece of it is an 800 megahertz, um, we call it the mobile or laptop project, and that is gonna replace the mobiles that are in the current squad cars right now, and those mobiles are between 10 and 12 years old. We've been waiting for the 800 megahertz. We're gonna be utilizing the same towers uh, for that 800 megahertz. We're gonna be utilizing the microwave system for that. And that is, uh, equipment is just being delivered now, and we're looking to start installing and testing the end of November, and that would provide ruggedized laptops in all of the squad cars um, for the county and for the municipal agencies. The city already has laptops uh, currently. So if someone calls into a, a dispatcher or if one of the radios go down or one of the systems are not working and it's one o'clock in the morning, what happens? And it goes down. And it goes down. <laughs> we have people that are currently on staff on call uh, we rotate it through the staff. Uh, they maintain 24 hours, seven days a week. They have a pager, they have a cell phone, and we've also developed spare part kits uh, for some of the critical equipment that is in the agency so that depending on what the uh, process was or whatever happened, we can replace some of the equipment. If it's a power outage, we do have UPS systems in uh, critical areas. And we also have generators as well so that we can maintain and kind of keep a system up and going. It may not be a full-blown system, but it can address the emergency at hand. Okay. Yet another area you're working in, uh, there's been more emphasis on the importance of land use planning. And the county board, as part of its budget, is putting more resources into that area, or at least is proposing to do so. You're working with the planning department on our digitized mapping system. What's going to be the benefit of that? Uh, it's actually three agencies that we've got working on it. Um, there's input coming in from the highway department, the planning office, and land and water conservation. And I have a gentleman on staff who is now coordinating that effort to pull all the data that's been collected um, over the last few years and bring that into a database so that we've used it this year for uh, the county clerk's office for the redistricting. Uh, we can use it for community planning as far as uh, soil and aerial maps for the county. And we look to expand it. Uh, emergency government is using it for evacuation plans so that we can actually plot this stuff out and map it and have it accessible for the citizens and for the engineers who are coming in to actually do the work for those municipalities. Very good. Thank you. You talked about just now about the uh, citizens using it. How many of our departments have uh, computer terminals that the public can use? I would say there's probably about four out there right now, most of them being in the administration building. Uh, there is one that's located in the courthouse for um, access for child support, and uh, I believe the clerk of courts has one that is accessible for the CCAP project for them. Is there any way that the public can access any of these departments um, from their homes? That's what we're looking to um, use the web for. We are expanding on that. What they're really calling out there now is the keywords called e-government. And to give the public more accessibility to information. Uh, expanding on the web, we want to look at being able to give more tax information to the public that they can call up parcel information. Also that they can call up map information as well too. So if they're looking at their parcel that they're currently living at or if they're looking at a site that where they maybe want to build, 
they should have accessibility to that through the internet. So that is something that we're looking for the 2002 time frame to expand on. You just have to figure out how to use it like I'd have to figure out how to use it. <laughs> the information well, might be there, but you have to be able to access it. We're hopefully get what we're looking at the software that we've been testing out right now seems to be very user friendly and I think it'll be easy for the public to uh, get through that and uh, find the information. If not, we do have the webmaster out there that they can always um, send an email to us and we could respond back to them. And depending on which department department's information they're trying to access, I'm sure that there are people in that department that could help them access yes. that information too. We just, the, as we're taping this tonight, uh, last night we uh, we looked at our preliminary budget and we were able to, at least preliminary, we haven't passed it yet, but to maintain a level tax uh, rate and even lower it by a penny or two. And we've been able to do that and still be somewhat creative in some of our programming and some, some new ideas one of, the, one of the things we're looking for is for our department heads to be creative in, in the services they provide to the community and be able to do it better but yet more efficiently also. Uh, what in the coming year or so are some of the projects that your department is looking at as far as, as any, any changes in information technology? Uh, we're looking at a major change in the Registered Deeds Office. We're going to be replacing the current system that's there with some new technology which should speed up um, the information as far as the retrieval process. Uh, we're also looking at um, in human services we're working with the state uh, to be able to provide a new application for um, child support for the child welfare system in that area and we're looking to bring that up in fact um, the de date that we've established right now is January 28th so that will be a way that human services can provide and track services to the clients that they are serving. Uh, also looking at public health to expand on a state network for vaccines so that not just the state agencies or county agencies have access to the number of records or the vaccines that are out there but also the doctor's offices. So we are looking at in January uh, providing some training locally here for a couple of those uh, clinics and also county staff and we're doing that in uh, correlation with the state agencies. Well it's really been a pleasure having you here Joyce. Um, one of the things that that really sticks out in my mind as I've dealt with you and your department over the last few years especially the last few years is the word training and, and you've that, that words come up quite a mm -hmm. bit this last half hour and and I know that's that's key for for computers, for any information technology is training. And, uh, and I'm glad to hear of all the training that's being offered and, and also offered to other municipalities uh, by your staff. And, and I think that's great. And, and, and the better educated and informed our, our, our employees are, the better we'll be able to provide the services to, to the community. So, so I'm, I'm really, uh, I think that's great that, that this large amount of training has been, I know it's time consuming time. And, and sometimes gets a little repetitive, but, but uh, I, think, I think that's great. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, next month we're going to have Ann Wondergem, our Director of Health and Human Services with us. Uh, it's, we've had that department before, but it's, it's a very large department in, in county government, providing a, a, a vast array of services to the community. And, and she'll be telling us a little bit what Health and Human Services provides in Sheboygan County. So we hope to see you again next month. Thank you.